Praise God. We thank God for the Father that he has brought us, and we thank God for this day. It is a day of its own kind that God has given us so that we may rejoice and be glad in it. And this morning, I want to welcome you, all of you back there at home who are following us. I welcome you into this service in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Lord, I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords, O oh my Father. You are the faithful God who has seen us through out the week until, Jehovah God, we are here today to worship you once again. Father, I want to commit this service unto your hands, God. I want to pray for your divine intervention in this service in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to cancel every work of the enemy. Anything that comes from the wicked one, my Father, I cancel and nullify it in Jesus' name. I want to pray, Jehovah, for the divine leadership of your Holy Spirit, O God. For each and every person taking part in this service, my Father, I commit them to you and call upon you Jehovah to release your divine strength upon them so that they may serve you Jehovah wholeheartedly in Jesus name Lord I thank you even for those who are following us from home may you bless them Jehovah God may you meet them at their points of need in Jesus name because I know that Lord we have desires my God we have our various needs it's only you God who sees in secret who knows what is deep within our hearts oh God and that is why I pray for them that Lord God God Almighty, touch them, Jehovah God. Liberate them, Jehovah. Take away every yoke and bond of the enemy today. Let your people be set free to rejoice and to be glad in you. Father, I thank you and I pray that you take preeminence over everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So right now, I want to invite the choir to sing uh, unto the Lord one a special song from the Tenzi, and that is Nataka Nimjue Yesu. Karibu sana.
wa kweli tutake kumjua Yesu zaidi na tuendelee ku, kumfahamu. So kwa wakati huu nataka kuwakaribisheni nyote so that we may recite the apostles creed. Na muamini Mungu Baba Mwenyezi, Mungu wa mbingu na nchi, na Yesu Kristo mwana wake wa pekee, Bwana wetu, aliyechukuliwa mimba kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu, akazaliwa na Bikra Mariamu, akateswa zamani za Pontio Pilato, akasulubiwa, akafa, akazikwa, akashuka mahali pa wafu, siku ya tatu akafufuka, akapaa mbinguni ameketi mkono wa kuume wa Mungu Baba Mwenyezi kutoka huko atakuja kwa hukumu walio hai na wafu na muamini Roho Mtakatifu kanisa takatifu lilo moja ushirika wa takatifu ondoleo la dhambi kiama ya mwili na uzima wa milele amen so it's now my time to invite the Sunday school for a presentation after that the Kiswahili choir will lead us in a special song and then uh, take us through praise and worship. And later on, Reverend Nganga will lead us in intercessory. So I now welcome the Sunday School. Please welcome for uh, the presentation. Thank you. Hello, children. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. I hope your October has been wonderful, and I hope you have been enjoying our lessons so far. Uh, today, we are going to have a drama story, which is a conversation about Naman, and uh, we are going to learn about Naman in general. So sit back, uh, find your pens, find your books, and let's enjoy together, OK? Sometimes we can feel hopeless, and sometimes we can feel very sick. But God created all of us and loves each one of us very much. In fact, God will love to adopt all of us so that we will be all children of God. No matter who we are or where we come from, we should see our need for God to heal us. This is exactly what a man named Naaman did. This is a story from the Bible that happened a long, long time ago. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 27. There was a man named Naaman, who was Armian. He was a captain of an army and a great warrior, and respected by the people and the king of Aram. But he was very sick with leprosy. Uh, leprosy is a very, very, very dangerous disease. It has no cure, and it's very contagious. So many people were afraid of this great man. His wife, of course, was very worried. My dear husband, you look worse than yesterday. We really need to find a doctor. Now, they had a servant girl who was from Israel, but she had been captured by the Armenians. Even though she had been taken away from her family and homeland, she loved Naaman and his wife very, very much. We really need to find a doctor as fast as we can. There's a man in Israel who could cure Naaman. Really? Yes. Let's go and talk aside so you can tell me more and let him rest. Let's go. With the king's permission, no man went to Israel, taking along with him several servants and gifts of money and clothes. Naaman first met with the king of Israel, giving him a letter from the king of Aram, asking that they cure Naaman of his leprosy. What is this now? Am I God? Am I a doctor? Why are you bringing this to me? Should I be able to cure you? This is nonsense. The king of Israel did not know what to make of this. This was just crazy. There was no way he could cure a man of leprosy. There was a man of God in Israel. His name was Elisha. He heard about the request and approached, telling the king to allow Naaman to go with him. So Naaman would know that there was a prophet in Israel. Go to Naaman and tell him to go to River Jordan and dip himself seven times. 
my master sent me to go to tell you to go and dip yourself seven times in the river Jordan. What is this nonsense you are giving to me? Yeah. Naaman was very was furious him. because Elisha did not even meet with him face to face to do some prayerful cleansing ritual. No. Instead, a mere messenger was sent to him with very silly instructions. Really? Wash in the Jordan River? There were other rivers much cleaner than the Jordan River, Abana and Parpar. Naaman was a very important man. How could he be treated like this? Master, please just do what the prophet has told you to do. Okay. Naaman decided to trust God in this and he went to Jordan River. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After humbling himself and decided to do it so, Naaman was completely healed. Naaman had found healing through trusting in God. Please accept these gifts from my humble servants. Surely as the Lord lives for myself, I'll not accept a thing. Please accept them. No, it's God who heals, not me. Okay. My master is too easy on him. Naman, Naman. Yes, is everything all right? Everything is all right. My master sent me, please give to you. Please give me the talents. Take all the talents you need. Please accept them. Where have you been? Your servants didn't go anywhere. Was my spirit not with you when he came down the chariot to meet with you? Is this the time to make money and accept clothes? No, no. What are you talking about? For pretending you don't know, leprosy will cling to you and your defender, descendants. Oh God, what have I done? God sees. Be careful. I hope you have heard that lesson and have understood each and every, everything about it. And uh, in this story, we learn about Gehazi. Gehazi was not... Uh, ready to accept what God has gide, had, had given him. So he wanted to look for more. And when he saw an opportunity from Naaman who was giving out worldly, worldly gifts, he decided to go for those worldly gifts. Yet forgetting that through his journey with Elisha, they had witnessed God's presence. They witnessed God's great miracles. Even at times, Gehazi had to go and do miracles on his own. But he was not satisfied by that. He was not contented with that. So he wanted to continue doing more and more and more. He wanted more. But God had given him everything he wanted. Everything was right with God and everything God gave him was enough. But at times as Christians, we think that what God has given us is not enough. And may you enjoy each and everything that God has given you. And uh, my friends are going to help me to recite today's memory verse, which is Philippians chapter 4. Verse 12. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Anywhere, at any time, I will be content, whether I have too much or too little. Let's repeat again Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Anywhere, at any time, I will be content, whether I have too much or too little. So, where? Anywhere. Anywhere. At what time? Any time. With what? Too much, too much or too, too, too little. little. Yes. Thank you very much. Back at home. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for this wonderful lesson that you have given unto us as you have protected us, as you have guided us. As you are starting this new month, God, may you go ahead of us. May you guide us. May you protect us. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
hekima bali kama watu wenye hekima si kama watu wasio na hekima bali kama watu wenye hekima ukiokomba wakati zamani hizi ni za uongo Bwana kwa sababu hiyo usiwe wajinga bali fahamu ni mapenzi ya Bwana kwa sababu hiyo usiwe wajinga bali fahamu ni mapenzi ya Bwana kwa sababu hiyo usiwe wajinga bali fahamu ni mapenzi ya Bwana Haleluya, haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Wacha tuchukue nafasi hii tukapate kumsifu Bwana ni kwa sababu hakika yeye amekuwa mwema, ametupigania, ametupa kibali kukua katika maeneo hii siku ya leo. Wacha tuchukue nafasi hii ili tukapate kumsifu na kwa njia hiyo tutamwabudu ni kwa sababu hakika yeye ni baba yetu na anatupigania sisi kila wakati. Pamoja Bwana nimetambua unanipenda Bwana nimetambua unanipenda Nimetambua unanipenda mimi Bwana nimetambua unanipenda Nimetambua unanipenda mimi Bwana nimetambua unanipenda Yeah. 
bariki bariki yesu bariki bariki dua bwana daima moyo wangu dua bwana daima dua bwana dua bwana daima moyo wangu dua bwana daima dua bwana dua bwana daima moyo wangu dua bwana daima Koti kukuwa bodo Nikikumbuka Uliko nitoa na piga magoti Kukuwa bodo Nikikumbuka Uliko nitoa na piga magoti Kukuwa bodo Nikikumbuka Uliko nitoa na piga magoti Koko abodo Nikikumbuka Uliko nitoa na piga magoti Koko abodo 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 Na piga magoti Do say my baba we. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity given to us to see a new day. Thank you, Lord, even for the privilege of worshiping you. And thank you, Lord, for what you've done to us this, this particular moment. We want to confess our sins before you as we ask you to forgive us and cleanse our lives, Lord. We want to offer an offering to you, an offering of praise, an offering of worship, and Lord, we just desire that you may be glorified and exalted in our hearts. We want to pray for the many people who need our prayers, particularly those ones who are following us from all over the world. 
via YouTube, Facebook, and even those who are following us on BHB, Biblia Usema Broadcasting TV. Father, we want to thank you. You are so good to us. We just want to worship you. We just want to give you praise. Thank you for we know consistently COVID-19 will be defeated and we will emerge victorious because of your name. We also want to pray for the sick among us ourselves that you may pay them a visit. Pray for those who are struggling socially. We pray for those who are struggling economically. The Father, you may visit your people. And we thank you for being a church that knows the Lord, a church that preaches the Lord, a church that does missions. We pray for our missionaries, wherever they are, Lord, use them to share the good news. Thank you, Father, for the many, many things that you're doing to us. We want to commit ourselves to you, even as we commit our speaker of this moment to you. Be glorified in each, each and everything we do. Father, we want to pray that in case there is any need that I have not mentioned, Father, may you answer our needs, address our needs according to your will. And thank you for hearing our prayer. All these things we ask in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you who are following us uh, through BHB, through Facebook, and those who are following us as, as we are streaming live, including members of the church who are attending our worship service. We want to thank you very much for finding time to come. This particular moment, we are happy that the Lord has given us yet another chance that we are able to hear the word of God, and we are grateful because God has worked with us the whole time. Now it's my pleasure to bring to us our speaker this morning, or this moment, whichever time it is, wherever you are. I know we have different time because we are having friends who are watching us from all over the world. Our speaker is Reverend Samson Samoe. Karibisana, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. I give God the honor for having this wonderful fellowship together with you. We give God a praise for allowing us to serve together. And today, as you have heard, my name is Reverend Samson Samoe, one of the pastors of AIC Fellowship. I thank Jesus for forgiving me my sin and calling me to this noble ministry to share together the word of God. And the word of God this day comes from the book of <coughs> Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. I want to share with a lot of passion because this message is of the new beginnings in our life as we settle in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn and I will read in an NIV version. The word of the Lord is teaching us today on settling on the Bible in order to mature. And this year we have been maturing and we are going through many things that are encouraging us to look unto this. And I will read in an NIV version, then expound them in a few minutes. The Bible says, In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight bath for him. John's clothes were made of camel hair, and they had leather belt, he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went to, out to him from Jerusalem and all the Judea and all region of Jordan. Confessing their sin, they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. Verse number seven. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you have brood, you brood of fiber. Who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Verse nine and 10. And do not think, <clears throat> You can say to yourself, who we have Abraham our father. I tell you, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is, has been laid on the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruits will be cut down and thrown into the fire. 
This message is a message that is telling us what happened immediately as the Lord Jesus Christ was born and God raised John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the son of Zachariah and Elizabeth, whom we saw them prophesying from the book of Matthew chapter 1 and chapter 2. And this was a man to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus so that the Lord Jesus Christ will have to preach the gospel and reach out to mankind in his death at the cross of Calvary. Now with this, we want today to look into how can we begin with the basics in the Bible. To begin with the basics in the Bible is this powerful message that the servant of God says, repent and amend your ways. We are looking unto this scripture. John himself was taken with a lot of respect because he was a prophet that ministered out of the city and people were going there to seek God's way and people could listen to him when he was teaching. Others were even religious leaders Others were people of business. Others were people of various kind lifestyles. And they went there, all of them. And when they believed in the word, they repented. And they were baptized in Jordan River. So this man of God made his place of preaching in a desert, in a very remote place. And he taught the word of God. And he encouraged people to repent. He encouraged people to live evil ways. According to a uh, dictionary, repentance means change of mind, resulting to the change of behavior. That is a Bible dictionary. It is telling us that to repent is to change your lifestyle by changing your mind and change your behavior. And today we are looking unto this because this is the basis that the Bible is beginning to work in our lives. It is unless we take this time to listen to the word of God and identify ourselves with the word of God and be willing to change. That is where the repentance can have the meaning and have an impact in our lives. Today as we look unto this, I want to get you to a very long story about repentance again. In the book of Acts, we saw Peter preaching in chapter 2, verse number 37 up to verse 38. He preached the word of God when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And people were listening, asking him, what can we do to be saved, to begin a new life, to see change? Because the word of God pierced unto their hearts. And he, was, he told them to repent. Repentance meaning you have to change. In the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, chapter 51, we saw a very powerful king by the name David who had sinned and he was praying a prayer of repentance when he had fallen away from the way of God. He asked the Lord to forgive him and to help him and to cleanse him. He repented. All of us, we have to learn that are we repentance? Have we repented of any sin that has held us back? In this world, the Bible is telling us that we are born in sin. We are conceived in sin. We are in the world of sin. And the only way for us to begin connecting with our God is to repent. Repentance means to accept the word of God after listening and be willing to change. That is repentance. And we want to look into a few things that will guide us as we learn today about having the basis, beginning with the basis in the Bible for us to grow, for me to mature, for me to become like Jesus, for me to have that lifestyle that God intended me to have. It begins with repentance. And we are looking into this having some few things. Number one is to look unto challenges that the people went through. In this scripture, we are given that there were Sadducees 
and the Pharisees. And in verse number six, it is says that they went there and when they listened to the word of God, people in verse number five says, people went out from Jerusalem and all Judea and all region of Jordan, confessing their sins that they were baptized and they were baptized in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of them, the Sadducees coming to him to be baptized, he asked them, you the brood of the fiber, who have, you have known that there is a wrath coming, produce the fruit keeping with repentance. My friends, it is unless we take the step of listening to the word of God, and not only listening, take a step of identifying with the word. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But people want to put some righteousness that becomes an obstacle. And one of the obstacles that have hindered many people is the obstacle of bride. We look unto what we do and we begin to say, I am not a sinner like that or like that person. And you have self-righteousness. I want to assure you that those are the obstacles even of listening to this message, of listening to God when he's talking to you. And it hinders the word of God from reaching unto you and become an obstacle of the will of God in your life and that makes many people to be under the bondage under the influence of the enemy and disobedient to god and one of them it brings fear when you allow fear in your life it becomes an obstacle there are fears over known there are fears of being with the right people and beginning to fear your friends who can mock you because you have accepted the word of God. I want to assure you that fear should not stumble you from repenting, from repenting and asking for forgiveness because God wants you to live a life of victory. God intends you to be forgiven. God loved us so much and he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will be saved, will be forgiven, and whoever repents of every obstacles will be saved. Fear is a big challenge to many people. And the enemy brings fear to our minds, to fear of even getting saved. We fear other people. We fear our friends. We fear even things that we don't know. And sometimes causes us not to repent. Another thing that causes us or an obstacle is guilty conscience. When we try to cover guiltiness by doing things and not repenting, you are actually opposing repentance. Repentance means you surrender and accept that I'm not able to save myself. I'm not worthy. I have done sin. I have committed sin. Don't cover with a lot of good works. Helping the poor is not bad. Giving money is not bad. Supporting your family or doing things to the people you have wronged to do is right. But it is not the best way. It is good to ask you for forgiveness. And that is to repent. To tell God, when I was doing this wrong, I was doing it to you. Maybe you have molested other people. You have stolen things of people. And God saw you. It is not those people. They may not know even that you have stolen their properties. They may not know that you have abused them. You need to repent. Repentance is the way that can get you connected to your destiny. The third thing is anger. Some of us, when we know that we have sinned, we begin to become so angry and resentment and begin to blow out of proportion because we want to cover the sin. I want to tell you that covering your sin with anger will end in jeopardy, will end in a very wrong way. 
In Kiswahili they have put a word, asira asara. When people, instead of repenting, they begin to become resentful. There was an old man that had a new vehicle. And one of his child, in a wrong way, in childish way, took a very small stone and wrote it, I love your dad. But that was out of anger, furious, bright, got out of his way and beat up the child until the child was hospitalized. We are told that when the child had that injury in the finger, it was chopped out by the doctor because it could not recover again. And when the Mzee came and washed that vehicle properly, he saw what the child wrote, I love your dad. And Mzee was under guilt and under obsession of regrets. There are many people who are regretting today. You may be one of them who is regretting of their past mistakes. Repent. That is the only way. Turn to Jesus. He's saying, come unto me. You are heavily laden. I'll give you rest. I'll forgive you. I will begin a new beginning with you. For you to settle, you need a repentant heart. Materialism is one of the challenge that is of our generation. We think when we get a lot of money, will make us happy. I want to assure you that that cannot cover your sin. You have to turn to the Lord who loved you so much and send his only begotten son Jesus and say, whoever believes in him will be forgiven. And that's why man of God here was saying, repent and your sins will be forgiven. Repent and be baptized. Repent and turn away. The only way is to repent. Second, the third point that I have is after listening and identifying yourself with the word of God, we go to the next place. What are the benefits of repentance? Turning to the Lord and saying, Lord, I have surrendered. I have sinned against you. When I was doing harm to myself, when I was angry and having a lot of resentment, when I was sleepless, when I had stolen or thought evil about somebody, what are the benefits when you repent? When you repent, there are great benefits. And I would like you to get a pen probably and a Bible uh, or you can read later on the scriptures of these benefits. One of the benefits that we get is restored fellowship with God. When you repent, you get restored fellowship. We have Zacchaeus in the Bible. Zacchaeus who had stolen, who had actually equipped a lot of finances. And when Jesus Christ met with him, he told him, Zacchaeus, come down from this tree. Let me today live with you in my, your house and even share your meals. The Lord Jesus Christ is looking unto you with mercy. That is in the book of Luke chapter 10. That is a story about Zacchaeus. The second thing, when the restored fellowship has been done, we can read also in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 7. When we have repented, we have a life that has meaning, have a purpose. The Bible tells us that there are many people who see their lives and count it meaningless. They give up. They look unto themselves and say, I'm sorry. But I want you not to be sorry of your life. Still something great that God intended for you. You have not achieved it because you have not repented. Repent and you will see the joy of the creation that God created in you. There is something installed in you. Gifts and talents and opportunities that no one else can do other than you. The Lord wants you to be a blessing. When you repent, you have a benefit of having meaning of your life. Number three is that when you repent, there are benefits. It gives you clear plans of God in your life. That is in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, don't walk in foolishness. Walk in light. 
Walk as a loved child of God. Walk in wisdom of God. There is a purpose in you. And in verse number 18, say, be filled of the Holy Spirit so that you do things not on your own, but by him that is working in your life. When you repent, you turn and begin to walk with the Lord himself. And he will use you as a vessel of honor, a vessel of its own glory. Number three, number four, is that when we repent, we are restored and given direction and focus. That is in the book of Philippians chapter four, uh, 3, verse 13. Paul was saying, I'm not beating the air. I have a direction in my life. I have a purpose. I have a direction. You will not be doing things because you're competing with other people. You will not be doing anything to please other people. You begin to do things because God has an assignment for your life. And God wants you to prosper and become that great person that he has intended you to be. And the best way is to repent. When you repent, you begin to have a new life. A life that has a purpose. Life that has a focus. Life that God himself is glorified. And again, in the next verse 15 of Philippians chapter 3, it motivates us when we repent, we become motivated. In what we do, we are happy. In wherever we are, we know we are in a mission. We are not complaining or competing with other people. We begin to compliment others. You begin even to appreciate yourself. You begin to know the battle is not towards God. You don't complain to God. You begin to accept God and be happy because it motivates you. Repentant life is a life of victory. It's a life of joy. It's a life that gives you purpose. And the last part of it, as I, because of time, is that when we repent, it gives us hope for eternity. We have an hope John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, Jesus said, don't worry. Don't complain in this world. Don't fear. I'm preparing a place for you. There is eternity for those who have repented. Whoever accepts his life to be in the Lord Jesus Christ, he is not dying. He has a hope beyond the grave. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, say, don't grieve like those who don't have hope. The people who have hope of people who are repented. I saw in a clip in Uganda when those people who had repented were being burned. They were singing, we praise you God. When Stephen was being stoned by people who were angry because of his message, he was looking unto Jesus. He didn't look unto the stones. And he asked him prayer of forgiving those who had wronged him. When you repent, you will have a purpose and a direction in your life for you to have a beginning. Beginning with the basics in the Bible, you have to begin with repentant heart. You have to begin by saying, Lord, I need you. And I want to pray with you that if you are there, you have been burdened by guilt of many things that you have done, the curses of your parents, your generation. There are generational curses. There are people who have gone through many challenges. They are wondering what can I do to come out of this guilty conscience. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. And he's there saying, come unto me. In the book of Matthew 11, 28 says, come unto me, you are heavily laden. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18 says, even if your sins are red as scarlet, he will forgive you and give you victory. I want to bless you today. This is an opportunity for you. And this message is your message. Don't say, if so and so would have had it, it is upon you. Repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Even if you did mistake to other people, ask the Lord to intervene for you by turning to him. Let's believe together as we pray. Everlasting Lord, thank you for your word that you have told us to repent so that we may bear fruits of repentance. The fruit of the Holy Spirit that is in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, 
verse 22 to 25. The fruit of the Holy Ghost. I pray for this dear person that has heard the word and is turning to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit, you may cause repentance that is genuine, that will turn his behavior or our behavior to be a behavior that reflects your glory. Forgive them, O oh Lord, of every sin, even if they are suffering because of disobedience, of not repenting genuinely. I pray, my Father, that today as they turn back to you, they may have the joy and you may restore the first love that you have intended for us when you created us. God bless your people and may your name be glorified. For I pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. And there is a number that will be given by our pastor. You can call and be helped on how you can have your repentance and grow in the grace and favor of God. God bless you and be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend, for that wonderful word. I know people are blessed because I'm already blessed. And we just want to say uh, time has come for us to give our offerings and uh, use our pay bill number, which is running down there on your screens, which is 668869. And now I want us to pray uh, as we close. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Your God who is mighty, God who is powerful, God who has power just to do anything. We thank you, God, for your word today that you've called upon us to repent of our sins and to come to you so that we may have eternal life. I know there are people out there, Jehovah God, who are blessed. I know there are people who are taking steps, my God, to come to you today. May you forgive them, my Father. May you set them free from every yoke and bond of the enemy. Father God, forgive them their sins, my Father. Let them be a, a new a children today in the kingdom of God. My Father, I pray for them that you are going to help them to stand. And Jehovah, Father, for all the rest, I want to speak your blessing upon their lives. Even as they go to the weak, I want to pray that, Father, your favor and your anointing will be upon them. Lord, I thank you and I give you praise. Now, let's share in the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.